Welcome to this week's message from Burwood United Methodist Church. I'm Tim Wood, the Supply Pastor, and today I'm going to talk about three things that I feel are very important about Christmas. Those are family, joy, and hope. I'm going to wait to read the scripture until I get to the section on joy, because that is the part, the scripture is the Magnificat, which Mary sang in the presence of Elizabeth to express her joy of being chosen to, to carry into birth the Son of God. Since I was born, there have been 60 Christmas days. Yes, I'm 61 years old. Many of the best days of my life have been among those 60 days. I Honestly, though, I don't remember a whole lot of them, and I, I couldn't tell you what my best present was, say, back in 2004, even though I don't have detailed memories of them. I retain the memories of all of them, of certain things that made an impact on me. Family, for example. Christmas celebrates the special bonds of families. Family was clearly important to Jesus. When he was suffering on the cross, he spoke to the apostle whom Jesus loved and made sure that he took care of Jesus' mother, Mary. I have good reason to be especially grateful this Christmas. I will be able to spend Christmas in the presence of my family, my wife, Cheryl, my sons, Daniel and Michael, and my mother-in-law, Fern, who turned 100 this past year. I'm lucky to do, be able to do that because we all live under the same roof. Many families will not be able to gather together as they have in the past. That's because they've chosen to follow the directives of the uh, government and not travel because traveling spreads the COVID-19 virus. Observing pandemic restrictions is certainly compatible with Christian belief because you're doing something for the sake of others, protecting them from getting the COVID-19 virus. It's not my place to pass judgment on anyone who does choose to travel during this time because all situations are different. And I can remember a time in my life when nothing would have kept me from traveling. It was when I had just become a teacher and I was coming up on a Christmas break and I felt a great need to go see my mother. I lived in Tennessee, my mother lived in Missouri. She had begun to show signs of dementia. Eventually she would be diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. I needed to get there because I wanted to at least see her one more time before the dementia made her incapable of recognizing me. And so we got there, she was doing okay. We were able to talk and have fun. And uh, But the next time I visited her, she couldn't even recognize who I was. She knew I was someone important to her. So I'm very glad I made that trip. And if the pandemic had been going on back then, I think I would have made that trip. So I'm not going to pass judgment on anyone who does. But make your decision based on reliable facts, the guidance of God, and do what you think you need, you need to do. Most of us have had Christmases that mix joy and sadness. Perhaps a family member had died. Perhaps there was a rift in the family. A breadwinner lost their job. Those sad things happened to far more people in 2020 than typically happened in a year. That's because 313,000 people have died of the COVID-19 virus. More than 17 million cases of the virus had been reported in the year 2020. And as a result of the pandemic, 8 million people in this country have fallen into poverty since the summer. In recent weeks, unemployment applications have averaged 800,000 per week. How can one possibly celebrate Christmas with all of that going on? Actually, that's even more reason to celebrate Christmas. It's imperative that we do celebrate Christmas. It brings with it joy, and for some that may be the only joy they have for a long time. But Christmas, whether you're physically separated or able to be together, the bonds of family are strengthened, and we are reminded of those strengths at Christmas. Now Christmas also is about joy. Sometimes we must wait for joy. When Mary learned she would be the mother of Jesus, of course, she had to wait until she had the joy of delivering the child, Jesus. Sometimes if joy comes unexpectedly and even wondrously. Something like that happened to me this past week. 
someone forgot to turn off the Christmas tree lights. And as I was getting ready to go to bed, I needed to get something out of the living room where the Christmas tree is located. So I went in there and the only light in the room was the Christmas tree. And somehow I felt drawn to it. I just walked to it and I just kind of looked at it for a few moments, just kind of took it all in, all the memories and meanings I associate with the Christmas tree. And then I remembered there's a special ornament that we always put on the tree and I wanted to find it. The ornament has a picture of my son Michael when he was maybe eight or nine years old. His teacher had the students uh, make these ornaments as a present to their parents. I found the ornament and I looked at it and there was Michael smiling that special smile that only a young boy can smile. And I just immediately felt joy. I can't exactly nail down the reason, but I smiled and I felt joy inside. And I felt that all up until the point I went to bed and fell asleep. It was truly a wondrous, unexpected joy. Some context for these scriptures. Elizabeth would become the mother of John the Baptist, the voice in the wilderness who prepared the way for Jesus. She was six months pregnant at the time that Mary received a visit from the angel telling Mary that she would bear a child who would be the son of God. Zachariah, a priest, was Elizabeth's husband. He found out that she would be pregnant when, as a priest, he was burning incense in the holiest of holies in the temple. He replied to the angel, saying, You've got to be kidding, or what? Because of his doubts, he lost his ability to speak until the words of Gabriel, the angel, came true. Mary is a humble young lady. Nazareth is a small fishing village. She works hard. She's maybe in her late teens. She's betrothed or engaged to Joseph, a man somewhat older than her, according to tradition. She's just uh, one young lady in Nazareth whom God chose for something special. And now her name is known throughout the world, throughout the ages. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to the man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Mary got up and hurried to a city in the Judean highlands. She entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. With a loud voice, she blurted out, God has blessed you above all women. He has blessed the child you carry. Why do I have this honor that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. Happy is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill the promises he made to her. Mary said, With all my heart I glorify the Lord. In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God my Savior. He has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on everyone will consider me highly favored. Because the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He shows mercy to everyone, from one generation to the next, who honors him as God. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered those with arrogant thoughts. 
and proud inclinations. Truly, the Spirit was with Mary as she said those words, inspired by the Spirit. And they remind me of many of the great passages in the Old Testament, like in Isaiah or in the Psalms, a combination of kind of prophecy and praise and acknowledgement of the greatness of God and what had happened to her. The Reverend Jim Willis, an evangelical Christian pastor, author, and justice activist, interpreted the, the Magnificat this way. The coming of Jesus is intended to turn things upside down. The power of the Bethlehem narrative includes the inn having no room for Mary and Joseph, and the lowly shepherds being the first witnesses of the new baby as hope for the world born in a manger with his homeless parents. This is not the conquering Messiah many were hoping for, but one from the bottom of society in a time of political unrest and massive inequality, sort of like now. Mary found joy in being given this enormous responsibility. I mean, she was going to give birth to the Son of God, and she was going to raise him. But Mary didn't overthink anything. She didn't consider how hard it would be to do all her chores and work and being pregnant. She didn't overthink it because it was very easy for her when the angel Gabriel told her that she would bear the Savior of the world, although she was initially curious and troubled. After Gabriel explained what would happen, and said, For no word from God will ever fail. Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. It's as if she could be saying, I am the Lord's servant. Therefore, your word to me will be fulfilled. Martin Luther said of Mary, Her loveliness, her holiness, and her appeal reside in her unawareness. A simple young woman saying yes to the life of God already growing in her. Without realizing it, she was now the Ark of the Covenant, the Holy of Holies, the open space where the infinite, uncontainable God became finite, contained in her womb. Mary's song reads like, like the words of great prophets, and in all of it there is joy. Now Mary would go through difficult times for being the mother of Jesus. There was a time when Jesus stayed behind in the temple, and she couldn't find him, and it took him, it took him three days to find him in the temple. Can you imagine what that would feel like to any parent? The pandemic and the presidential election dominated the news in the busy year of 2020. Both led to considerable amounts of stress and grief. Yet lately, there were two glimmers of hope. On December 14th, the largest vaccination campaign in U.S. history began as healthcare workers started receiving the COVID-19 vaccine. The scientific community had done the impossible to develop and gain approval of a vaccine in less than a year. Another vaccine since has received approval, with more vaccines on the way. The vaccines, in combination with mask wearing and social distancing, can defeat the COVID-19 virus. Also on December 14th, the Electoral College of the United States cast its votes for president. In doing so, it affirmed the integrity of the nation's system of free and fair elections. That system had been assaulted in an unprecedented way. Despite that, the vote of the electors reflected the will of the people. And shortly after that, politicians of both parties in the Senate got together to work out a bipartisan stimulus bill. At, this, at the time I say this, it looks like it's going to pass. And that's a very positive sign because it means in the future we may actually see some governing from Washington. At times, it's difficult to have hope. Life beats you down. 2,000 years ago, the world had been beaten down by its rebellion against God and the influence of the tempter. Then, Jesus came. Jesus brought hope to the lame, the blind, to the people shunned by society. He defied the religious authorities. He was a radical. He turned the world upside down. Hope was born on Christmas Day. No matter our circumstances, we must celebrate Christmas. Christmas has the power to heal. Christmas is one day we can put our problems aside. Christmas teaches us what truly is important. Despite pandemics, wars, and political controversy, the spirit of Christmas cannot be defeated. May you feel the love of family. May you receive joy. And may you have renewed hope this Christmas. Amen.